I see North as like very similar to us, like the same play style, same play similar, defense, offense. I just think it'll be whoever wants it more in this game. We knew North was going to be a good team. Like we've been talking about them since the summer about how you know we they're later on our schedule and we can't forget about them and no matter what keep that in the back of your mind. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle. I mean I don't think either team should be expecting to have some huge scoring game or a blowout or a, a shutout or anything like that. I mean I think we we know it's gonna be a battle and I. I I ultimately, I, I think we're ready for it. It's, it's like playing against ourselves, and we all know each other, too. Like, like Charlie and Rocco played fo youth football with them, and I think being all going to school in Nashville, we've kind of made friends with them before and after the game. Um, so it, it's always a fun matchup. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be, be very tough. We're going to have to put in 100% effort, but it, it's, it should be fun. Since my freshman year, they... They were like our base competitor just for my my class, my group of like the group of the team. So we always knew that they were gonna be like similar to us as we kept moving through our years. And it's exactly what it's turned out to be. Like a lot of their starting guys are kids that have been playing for the past three years like we have. So yeah, I definitely see that it's really mirror images and it's gonna be a hell of a fight. It's gonna, it's definitely the biggest game of the season for us by far. A lot of, at least for me personally, having played with all of those kids back in youth and for my whole football, hopeful football career, I mean, this has been, this is kind of what it's led up to, you know, senior year, your final time to, to play against your friends, like this is, this is what it's, what it's all about. Very similar in a lot of ways, um, you know, and we're familiar with them seeing them last year, you know, in the last few years before, you know, they were, they were loaded and they were smashed us couple times even during the COVID year like we played them twice and they were not close either game so it was a big time confidence boost I think last year being able to come in and not just compete with them but to beat them but they didn't give up like they scored two late touchdowns on us last year and almost came back and won so you know again can some of the guys that played in that game last year look at it as like hey if we get up a couple scores like it's not over and if they get up a couple scores like we're gonna have to battle back you know, and they have some really talented pieces and they have a really good coaching staff and there's some familiarity there. You know, I think they probably have a little more team speed than we do. Um, so, you know, they're going to try to get the edge and we're going to have to try to get off blocks and, you know, you got to win the turnover battle again and hopefully we can get Matt going and pick and choose our spots in the pass game. But it's going to be huge for Baker, you know, and again, can we get some of these guys that have been out for a few weeks back? It would be nice because I think we're going to need them if, we can get him.
And that is number two, Amario Monte. And he is in for the Nashua Nord touchdown. And then being down two scores. As a team, I feel like we handled it well. Like, we came, we saw the adversity, we were down two scores. A lot of other teams might think, like, oh, like, this is it. Like, it's going to be bad. This is not going to be a good game for us. We turned it around. We ended up picking momentum. And then going into halftime, when we had the score tied pretty much, it's just like the momentum shifted a completely different way. And then the energy just came up. And it just, I feel like it all comes with the energy from the team and then, like, the stands and pretty much just, like, how things are going on the field. Me personally, I, I never got scared being down 14 nothing. and I think, uh, football's in games of up and downs, which showed in that game. I mean, we were, they, they were up, we were up, they were back up. I mean, it's all back and forth, so I wasn't scared. I mean, if they would have scored like another touchdown or maybe one more, then it starts to be like, ah, uh, we have a problem here. But I, I wasn't nervous at all when we were down by 14. I wouldn't say there was really, really any panic because, like, once we got the ball back, we bounced back, and then once we scored the first time, we were like, all right, we can hang with them. And then we scored again, and we were like, all right, we still got them by a lot. Yeah, I would say there was no panicking whatsoever. It was more just like, come on, guys, let's, we need to wake up. Like, we can't let this, you know, can't let them keep running up the score like this, you know, lose the game in the first quarter. So it was more like not panicking, but like we all know what we have to do, and we all just have to wake up and do our jobs, and that's what it ended up playing out to be. There was a lot of talk, and, you know, I feel like every one of us kind of knew that we needed to come back and we needed to get our heads in the game. But we were all trying to pick each other up. I mean, two score hole. That it looks really, it looks pretty bad. Going going up, them going up. I mean, two touchdowns on us. That's it looks like man, like what what is going on? Now we got to come back, not once but twice. But I mean, if you think about it, I think everyone realized, okay, like we have some problems on special teams. It was a special teams touchdown. It's not like they drove on us twice and got a four and out and then drove again and scored. I mean, so we knew that we were part of that we were in this game still. We knew that they weren't walking away with it right from the beginning. So I think the circumstances of those touchdowns definitely kept everyone locked in and ready to go, like rather than, you know, getting down on ourselves. You know, I think that's been a pretty big theme this year. I mean, I mean, usually we're the ones who put it on teams and um, get going right in the beginning. But I think looking back on like Londonderry especially, we learned a lot from that, that you can't just lay down and die after a team gets up on you. You know, going into playoffs, that could very well happen again. They're all, all the teams in the playoffs are good teams, so it's not unlikely that another team gets the first points on us and, or gets a drive and scores, you know. So I, I think going forward, it's, it's a good thing that it, it happened that way, and it's something that we can learn from rather than look down. When we're down 14 nothing, I'm looking around and, you know, I start seeing some heads going down. Kids start walking around a little bit, you know, and they're high school kids. So, I mean, I was kind of yelling a little bit, like, we got to wake up and trying to look at some of the seniors. I think the first kid I went up to was Rocco and just be like, hey, man, like, somebody's got to get these kids going or to Dante. Like, somebody's got to wake these kids up, you know, and it doesn't necessarily always have to come from me. Um, you know, at the same time, I think once they kind of start figuring it out and you know, start moving the ball, you start having a little success, you know, they can start to be, you know, resilient, but, you know, you have to do it fast, right? There's not a lot of time. You go down three scores, you're done, you know, for the most part. So ultimately they bounce back, move the ball, get, you know, get some confidence there. And then, you know, once you make it 14-7, you're right back in it. Now we just got to take it one series at a time. Got to get a stop. Um, so I was really happy with that. I think at the half when it was 14-14, you know, the first thing I said in the locker room was like, what a second quarter. What a great second quarter that was. Um, and just really happy with that. And the attitude was we were going to win the game. And there wasn't really a whole lot of question to it.
ourselves back into the game. So the mentality coming out of halftime was, you know, the game 0-0. Zero, zero. So this whole new different game, like there really was no like doubt or negativity. More just like we got to keep going and we got to come back and win this game. Good. I mean, we felt great, but, you know, we knew 0-0 zero, zero, come out of the half, you know, tied game. It was important to win. It felt really good, and it also let them know that we're not going to back down, and we're going to keep going, and it's going to be a fight the rest of the way, so it was definitely good. I feel like we kind of shocked North at halftime. That was my kind of like thought process, because I don't feel as if, like, I don't know if North has played like that or been down, like has had a momentum shift like that. Walking to the locker room, I feel like momentum was definitely on our side, and I felt good about the next half, because I feel like... We've seen adversity before, and we've been in tougher situations. So I feel like, as the team, I feel like we were more confident than they were going in the second half. Um, it was a mix of emotions. It was like a lot of kids were excited, but a lot of kids were taking it more serious, and it was like, okay, we need to we need to forget about that first half and play it like a zero zero and finish out the second. So, me personally, I was kind of a mix of both. I was kind of like happy we we came back and it was tied, but. I wanted to get in that mood of being serious, which is not normal for me, and I don't think I really got in that mood. I just stay happy and kind of play with audacity, and and I have fun. So that was that was kind of my mood. But the the, the aroma was just felt full of um, great energy and um, seriousness. on the carpet. Number 33, Ethan Lobby on the kick. Not Santa Suazo on the kick. And that is number 33, Ethan Lobby, and he is in for the Bishop Curtin touchdown. That's what I love to do. I mean, uh, as a runner who typically, you know, not, not the shiftiest guy, kind of just a straight, straight up the gut. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way I, I like it to be. Just straight down the field, just give it to them and show that we're like a force to be reckoned with on, on offense. You know, it's, it's, it's very, it takes a lot. It's, it's a very prideful thing to be able to run the same few plays just down the field and still score on a team. It really feels like the uh, offensive line and then your team is like, get like dominating more than them more than like you would think but I feel like small drives like that really just put like a I don't know like a hammer like a hammer in the nail pretty much instead of just getting one big play. It feels good just to know we can um, have success in other areas even though North was stopping us and a lot of the times um, but I really like I don't, my hopes don't get all the way up if we score one or go up by two touchdowns I, I wait until like the last minute to where I'm like kind of like okay we got this or Oh, oh crap, like, we're about to lose this, so, it doesn't really change me personally, I'm still going to play football, how it was in the beginning of the game, so. I felt like we were in a good spot, we were pretty confident with, like, the lead, especially with the time situation, and then, which would happen next, is, like, we, we ended up stopping them, I think they were at the 40, and they ended up getting to, like, a second and 25, so, like, now we're even in a better spot, and then they just, like, threw up that insane ball, and, like, it was crazy. It always feels good, you know, being up front, especially with this past game, you know, I really, you know, was knocking people down left and right, you know, creating big holes. So 
always when someone's been able to run back behind me and they get a score off of it or a big gain, it's like I don't get the recognition, but I know what I did. I know that I, you know, set that play up. So, and especially when we see the success in our rushing game, you know, you kind of feel like that's you. That that's what you're doing. second which showed um, I wish we kind of got that extra point well I mean two point conversion um, just because to have like that guaranteed feeling I'd be like okay they can score but we'll still be up so I was kind of on the edge from both sides of the team happening within the same drive. You don't really get a second to like grasp it, is how I view it. I didn't really understand, like, I knew what was happening, but I didn't really get a second to grasp, like, wow, that just happened. Like, we have big plays like Jacob's sack, exactly. It was second to 27, I was like, wow, this drive feels good. Like, we might get a defensive stop here. And then the play goes like 30 yards down the field. And that was just a crazy thing. I'm like, okay, let's just get a de defensive stop. It's going through my head, like, we can do this. Like, I know it's red zone, but we can still get it. They ended up scoring it, and I'm like, wow, like one extra point, and this might seal it. And then they miss it, and then we're like thinking, oh, we can actually win this thing. Like, this can go our way.
the ground. He's going to be called down. There. I look at the clock. I look at the situation. I'm like, I really need to get this ball out. I need, I need a good punt. And I don't want to blame it on anyone. It's, it's, it's no one's fault. But the snap went... I would say two yards in front of me. I could have stepped up and grabbed it, but just without the, the emotions I was going through. And the ball was coming hot, too, so it was bouncing. I, 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 the coach and my dad always told me, like, don't put your knee down and grab the ball. But if it wasn't for me putting my knee down, I think it would have went through my legs. So I wasn't thinking in the moment. Went down on a knee, grabbed the ball. Right when I did that, I was like, oh, man. Kids were yelling at the ref, the ref calls it, and it, it was just a whole emotional shift. He was a very kind of happy-go-lucky personality-wise, a really hard worker. I don't think that he ever gets too high or too low. Um, you know, if you're going to have a situation that doesn't go well at the end of the game, no matter what it is, you want your best players out there. You know, you're going to live and die with those kids. Um, you know, no game is ever won or lost on one play, no matter what anybody in the stands thinks, you know. There's a, a lot of plays. I think in the game we saw there was 151 plays. We had plenty of opportunities earlier in the game to, to win, and we had plenty of opportunities late to win. You know, I think, you know, if the kid drops a pass or it's not a great throw or, you know, there's some type of issue, you know, the execution is one thing, and, and you know, you try to fix those things. But, you know, if Jacob doesn't have a great game, we're not even in a position to win that. And then um, – you know, you watch the film too, and we got to clean up some of the special teams alignment. You know, where are these guys lined up? Um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. You know, we see a missed kick or an issue here. How's the snap? How's the protection? You know, are they lined up correctly? Um, he was down. The officials made the right call. Um, you know, it's not what you want to have happen. Again, teachable moment. Um, can you correct it so that it doesn't happen in a big playoff game going forward? You know, at the same time, you know, just trying to move forward. And that is number two of Mario Monte. He picks up a great block on the edge, and he is in for the Nashua North touchdown. Sonoswazo's pass is incomplete. to move the ball and in the run game and you know ran a few different personnel packages that we weren't necessarily planning on and you know just it's anything anything that you can possibly do to get the ball down the field you know if that requires us to run great if we have to throw great you know and trying to get guys involved you know the offense obviously runs through Matt we've leaned on Ethan Labby a ton both of them had great offensive performances um, you know, at the same time, it's really frustrating. And we talked about it in film, and I shared it with the kids. When you see the time of possession difference, we, we doubled them in plays in the game. We doubled them in yards. Um, you know, it's frustrating. You don't usually lose those games. You know, in the close games that we've played, whether it's this year or even going back to last year, you know, we don't usually lose the one-score games. You know, so it's really tough to, to finish a game and to, you know, 
to walk off the field and you're starting to wonder, like, did we kind of let that one slip away? Um, so it's tough. But again, you know, good or bad, we've won a plenty of games here where I wasn't overly thrilled with the effort. So I think you have to, you know, as kind of cliche as it sounds, like you kind of have to ignore the scoreboard to a degree and just like, what did your eyes tell you? Did the kids fight really hard for four quarters, win or lose? Yeah, they did. So I'm happy about that big picture. But this year where it was such high stakes against like two top teams where it was, I, I've never been a part of something like that. It was, it was very, very cool and very, very emotional to go up and down like that. You know, at one moment you're so confident that like, oh my gosh, like we just got to get the ball and run out the clock and then they throw a bomb down the middle of the field and now it's a closer game. It's just like, it was crazy to be a part of that. It's going to be a good test for us, as Coach Trish would say. Um, so we walked into it well prepared. We watched a lot of film that week and just honestly, we just gave it all of our best and honestly, like the energy around it and the culture around it, it just, it's a lot different compared to like my freshman year. When my freshman year we came in here, it was nothing like this. Like the atmosphere wasn't the same. We like, we didn't really win any games freshman year. And now like to see how far we've come and to see like how much we've grown and how much the program has changed since then, it's just really good. Oh yeah, it's something I'll remember forever. All these North kids I know personally and they're, they're good friends of mine. And going up, like walking with the captains up to see their captains, I know all of them. So it was just like hugs and smiles. And, it's gonna, I'm going to remember that for a, my whole life. and Whenever I think of football, I'll probably think of this game. It was definitely cool to be a part of that, especially my freshman year. Like We weren't even like like near like a contender to even go far at all. Even my sophomore year, we made like a play-in round, but we still didn't win. And then junior year, we still haven't won our playoff game. So like now senior year, we're in a good spot to be in a good position. And this game like meant a lot to us, even getting a bye first round. But still, we're in a good spot to compete and win our first playoff game. Anytime you play a rivalry game, you're excited. Coaches are excited. The kids are excited. The school community uh, is excited. You know, the turnout at the stadium is good. The rivalry with Nashua is always fun. I think some people just kind of with the expectations of this year sometimes lose track of where the program might have been you know, three, four, five years ago, you know, six years ago. So I think every once in a while, you know, when things don't necessarily go the way you want or you don't win a game, you know, to be able to try to take a step back and just see, you know, kind of where where we're at right now and you take a lot of pride in that to be able to compete. You know, we played a lot of games with North over the last few years that were not very competitive. Um, you know, so it's a fun game for sure. The competition's really good. You know, you see where you're at. And, you know, you try to let the kids know that the season's not really defined by one game. You know, we got another one coming up this week, and then we're going to be in the playoffs. But we're also kind of, you know, running out of time to correct some, some of these things. So there's a sense of urgency. But overall, you know, I think, like I said, if you could take a step back and kind of see where we are, you know, I think if you would have told me this is, you know, kind of the situation we'd be in five years ago, I would have been pretty happy with it. We all know like the next upcoming schedule and what's actually going to happen, not like what ifs or like if we beat this team, this is going to happen. Now we it's in concrete and we know. Um, I feel like the team is a much, like I'd say a better spot because knowing now we have to prepare ourselves for what we have to like do the next upcoming weeks in order to prepare ourselves to be better and to end up getting a win that first round of the playoffs. So yeah, I mean it's definitely a, it is a lot less stressful, you know. I mean we obviously. I think with our injuries and us having kind of a smaller program, definitely, we definitely could have used the bye. I think any team would have wanted to, you know, get the best best position possible. But I do think knowing does take some weight off of our shoulders, you know, just just so that we can get a plan kind of nailed down as to what we're going to do, who we have to study for. But uh, and honestly, it also kind of make keeps us on our toes, you know, not instead of planning for a break, we're planning for a for a game and you know it's almost, it's like just one extra battle we got to fight on the way to hopefully a, a longer run. Now that it's a lock I kind of think of a positive positives without the bye and I kind of I was talking to my dad about this it's my last season I, I, I mean I guess it's like one more game like I, I don't miss a week of football like I get to play every week no, I'm not saying like we could lose yes that's a hypothetical chance but just just getting one more game in there um, I kind of like because more football is makes me happier. So.
play makes everyone more settled, especially the fact that we're going to get more of a break after playing like three tough teams back to back to back. So now like we're going to rest a little bit, focus on what we have to do, take care of this next game, and then just focus from there. Definitely for sure. I mean, I wasn't trying to get caught up in as far as like whether or not if like we have a chance of going further, if we have a bye, if we don't. But more looking at as if we get a bye, you know, could we get some of our injured guys back or if we don't get a bye, can we just, you know, figure it out and hopefully get some guys back just by luck. So, I mean, definitely knowing that we're going to come out for the first round, potentially playing Dover at home, definitely feels good, especially to have the home field advantage. You know, we got to look to the future. You lose a game, it doesn't matter, you just got to learn from it and all of a sudden, you know, I think when we got into that three-week stretch of Londonderry, Bedford, North, we knew those were really important games. You want to win them all. We knew if we were going to put ourselves in a position to get a bye, we needed to probably win at least two out of the three. You know, and it's hard not to look ahead. You know, you try to focus on each week. At the same time, now we kind of really have to slam the door shut on that stuff. So to try to go out this upcoming week against Keene and hopefully have a good senior night experience for everybody and then to be able to host a playoff game, whoever it ends up being, and trying to focus on, hey, it's time for us to win a playoff game. You know, it's great to host it. Now it's time to win one, you know, and then see how far of a run we can get on and can we get healthy and, you know, can we start playing some good football consistently against really good op opponents. You know, so once the playoffs start, for the most part, like all those teams are going to be capable of winning. You know, and it'll be a great challenge for everybody.